Good morning, Jeff Serber, Operations Section Chief with Great Basin Team 1 with your morning update for September 4th. For today, starting in the back of the fire again, probably sounds like a broken record. We are back here patrolling, monitoring, picking up uh, equipment. We call it backhauling equipment off the line uh, to be used elsewhere, either on the line or shipped back to the cache for refurb and sending out to another fire. So that's kind of what's going on all the way back in the area where you can see what we call our, our divisions WW and XX, which is uh, from, the, from the fire, from the active fire back towards the inactive fire. Coming over to Taylorsville right here on the map, we continue to look for other opportunities. This fire that's, that snuck out over the top of, of, that, of the ridge two weeks, maybe a week and a half ago, is, continues to get a little bit bigger. We keep on holding it in check with aircraft so that we can buy time for a uh, planned burn operation in here to tie this, this fire, the, this portion of the fire, back over to this portion of the fire right through here and, and protect Taylorsville and prevent this, this active fire from moving back to the south. So that continues on. I've talked, probably sound like a broken record on that one too. I've been talking for a week about that. Uh, what this has done is given us time to go in there and stare out a little bit more, come up with some other uh, possible opportunities to provide even more protection to, to uh, Taylorsville. And uh, so that's what we're doing in there. Um, we always look for opportunities when we have the time. Uh, when we don't have the time, we, we still have opportunities, but, but when we have a, a lot of time, we can make uh, things, try to make things much more bulletproof than, than uh, uh, other times. So that's what we're doing in here. We feel like we have time. We're just taking it slow, smooth, and, and uh, figuring out the best process to protect Taylorsville. That's our, our big uh, concern up in there. So moving over onto the fire edge from Grizzly Mountain, coming on down through uh, all the way along Grizzly Ridge over to Davis Lake, looking really good. We, we left people out on the hill last night. They did what they call a line spike. They just stay out on the line, eat a meal ready to eat, military type of meals and for a night or two and they stay up there because the road system has gotten so beat up by all the traffic, heavy equipment traffic and, and, and other types of traffic that it's, it's heavy dust and rock and it's making travel very difficult back and forth to that section of the line. So what we've done is we've left the firefighters out there and uh, they're camping out there, staying out there for a night or two, then they'll come back down. That'll just prevent all that travel time back and forth. Moving on from Davis Lake, Lake Davis to Coming up back up to the north, uh, the, uh, the line that we worked over on uh, um, Turner Ridge a day or two ago is looking really good. We had some military folks in there backing up uh, the regular firefighters and they're, they're knocking the heck out of that and it's starting to cool down and look really good back in, in that Turner Ridge area. So we're starting to feel much more comfortable that this portion of the fire will not head down to the south towards Lake Davis. Yesterday, we had uh, the, um, our incident meteorologist predicted that the wind would start out, uh, kind of out of the southwest and slowly wrap around in a clockwise manner. And that's exactly what happened. And that's what caused this fire to grow in this area, especially. So yesterday, uh, towards the afternoon, the wind shifted around, started coming out of the north and pushed all this fire, this fire and this fire that you can see that's all new came out of that wind shift pattern that just pushed this fire back almost full circle. I was down here on the road and it had pushed, it was starting to blow right back towards itself over on this other side. So what we did last night uh, during the night shift, uh, th this all occurred in the afternoon. It was a pretty intense fire uh, that came out. In this area, you can kind of see how much of that expanded. Whereas this area up in here didn't expand near as much. That's because the wind came out, got into a brush type, sagebrush, and and came out and had a, had a pretty good head on it here and over off of the Coyote Hills. So last night we constructed a dozer line from 177 Road back over to the, to the west, tied it in with this road that was planned to use for, for a control feature, and we're working in there this morning to tie up this fire in the Coyote Hills from coming down to the south. Moving up to the northeast from the 177 Road, we constructed dozer line last night all the way back over to the 01 road where it heads down towards Dixie Valley. And uh, there's about two tenths of a mile that did not get completed last night because it, they got into rock, rocky areas and we'll get in there with a the hand crew this morning, tie that together and have line 
all the way from the 177 back over to the 01 to prevent that this fire from continuing to the southeast. Uh, no structures were impacted last night in the Dixie Valley area. Uh, the, the crews got up on the hill above the closest structures and uh, started working that fire edge so that that fire would not continue into the Dixie Valley community. Uh, up in this area has not been worked yet. All the way along this line has not been worked yet. It was not worked last night. So what we have, what we're planning on doing, is coming down the 01 road southeasterly till we get to Ross Canyon, the Ross Canyon road that cuts back over here to the uh, Sugar Fire in the in the uh, in the Beckworth complex earlier this summer, and. Uh, tie this fire back into the Beckworth complex to prevent it from moving anywhere farther south. We also have one other option off the Ross Canyon Road. We plan to use the Ross Canyon Road, road that's on this. It's not on this map, but it, uh, for those folks that are local, that I'm sure they know where that Ross Canyon Road is, tie it back into the fire. Uh, at the same time, we'll be constructing off the Ross, Ross Canyon Road another dozer line that'll take us back over to the Sugar Fire as a contingency. So if we, if we use this as our primary line in Ross Canyon and lose the fire as it as it progresses then uh, if it spots over we have another line in place that we can use to prevent that southern spread so that's our plan for today what we're doing out in that area moving on up this fire uh, you can kind of see that this this fire activity up here is going to eventually uh, carry all the way over and run into the sugar fire so there's no reason for us to go up and deploy resources up in here unless uh, it rained or did something like that and we wanted to go up and, and we could work this edge safely and, uh, uh, pre and, and save all this forest land, we would do that. But in this case, we're, we're holding our own, trying to just keep this from coming towards communities and that's our priority over the, the timber and the other resources up in here. One thing I will say about this fire last night right here, I flew twice just before dark and uh, as it settles down, uh, it's an underburn. The trees are still green. The fire stays on the ground. It's burning in that manner, especially in here most of the day. You can see that where it doesn't expand that much, it's on the ground a lot and, and, and it will leave green trees behind. Where it expands rapidly, like right here, that was an intense fire that took out trees and took out all the sagebrush. So, so there, there are uh, different fire effects on this fire uh, as far as the, you know, either you know just black trees or a lot of green trees with black understory that will grow back within a few years so that's kind of what's going on right in here i talked about what's going on in here and then up on the escarpment above 395 we have our west zone partners helping us out up there we used a lot of aircraft in here because they had clear air like i talked about when the wind came around and shifted yesterday in this manner it pushed all the smoke out this way so they had good clear air over here where they could fly aircraft and we put a lot of retardant on this uh, uh, from the folks that are local would know the motocross track back up the hill to the escarpment, trying to tie that in with retardant to prevent the spread of the fire farther, uh, farther uh, southeasterly. And then uh, there's dozer line and we've used a lot of retardant just to try to capture as much as we can in here and slow that fire down from its spread uh, if and when it comes down off the escarpment. So that's kind of what's going on in that on that far side and then today we created a new division division oscar oscar right here and what we did is we, we call it span of control if if this person is pretty much tied up this division soup over here is so tied up with his resources that he can't uh he, he can't effectively get through the fire right here we couldn't drive through the fire because it was too intense then he's lost access to this other piece that is is his responsibility so what we did is we brought in another person, planted them in over on this side of the fire today to handle the resources. We have military over there and we have other resources on this side that are gonna go ahead and work to control the fire on this portion of OO. On, uh, on uh, pretty much what we have is this final little piece right down here. You can see that was hot yesterday to wrap that with dozer line uh, to get back over to the, to the O1 road. I was out here several days ago off the O1 road um, when it burned uh, in, a, in a, an intense wind-driven fire and it, and it went out on its own pretty much all along this, uh, this road. So that's why you, you see this piece of fire. We're not ready to call it contained yet, but it, but it's, it's, uh, it burned at 
pretty much burned itself out when it got to the flats. It couldn't sustain itself. So we have patrols out there making sure that that fire can't move, move northeast anymore. But uh, so the main intent for OO today is to capture this chunk of fire coming back towards Black Mountain out to the escarpment using all the resources he's got on his division today. And that's the update for this morning. Thanks.